Hi, everybody. This video is to help students navigate through the course. Um, so I just want to kind of go through an overview. Now, while we are still in remote sessions, you can click on this link and it will open up our um, class inside Zoom. So every day, well, we only have two more class periods, Wednesday and Thursday, where you will click on this link here at the top um, and it will open up Zoom so that we can um, meet in our classroom in Zoom. Now I am on the homepage. So as soon as you go to your dashboard and you click on our class, um, 1414 section 63, this is what pops up automatically. So you should be seeing this at the very beginning when accessing our class in Canvas. Okay, once you're here, you can either click here at the bottom where it says click here to begin. That's where you went to go to your orientation. Um, but if you notice when I hover over it, it just pops up modules because this is just a link, just like this one over here on the left hand side. So you do need to be in your modules view and in order to get everything that you need from the class. Now, each morning when I do offer the extra credit quizzes, um, they are in here, okay? Um, but I'm gonna shorten that just to keep this out of the way. If we get another one for today's class, um, it would be here at the bottom, okay? Now, I did reorganize how the units look, so it might look a little different than it looked in the past, but I do wanna go over how to navigate through the new um, set okay so my unit one module is just the outcomes that we're going to cover and then the timeline so you really have an idea of when we're going to be covering things okay if I go back to the modules view um, underneath that it does tell you um, how to get the notes that I use during the lecture videos and you do have to click on this file and once you're in there you load it in a new window. And then once actually in the assignment, um, you do have to click the drop down arrow next to description. So if I scroll down and I see this description, I do need to click that drop down arrow and then I can download this file, which contains all of the notes that I use for the videos. Okay. You do need to select, I am aware that I can download the associated workbook unit file here click true and then submit this, okay? Um, this is for verification purposes. One, to make sure that everyone's going through each item in the, in the Canvas module. So if you didn't come here at all, then I know you're not following the steps in the Canvas module. Um, and then of course you wanna submit this and select true and then submit. You don't really even have another choice of an option, but please make sure that you are aware that you can download that file before you click on true and submit. Okay, going back to our modules. Um, once you are able to download that file, um, that should help you move along in the lecture videos. And you can even take notes on those sheets of paper as well if you decided to print them. Um, once we return to face-to-face -face class, I will give you copies of all of those notes. So you will not need to go download and print. I'll have them printed for you. But I did post um, a page here that says week lectures. So if you go to the timeline, you'll see the sections that we cover in week two are P.3, P.4, and 1.4a. So if you go to the week two lectures page, it should be videos just for those three sections. Okay. So here we have the first one is P.3. The next one is P.4 part one. P point, or I'm sorry, it says R4, but it meant P4, P4 part two, um, and then 1.4A. So those are the, um, all the different lecture videos that you need for those three sections, okay? I'm gonna go back to modules. Um, after you've seen those lectures, there is an assignment right after that, that tells you, um, which um, homework assignments to complete. And I just noticed I'm in the online class. So let me go back to our class modules. So we've got that, there we go. 
So you've got the workbook here. You've got the week one lecture. We only covered P.3 in week one. So that's the only lecture video inside this page. And then for the week one homework assignment average, um, I only had you guys do the P.3 that first week. Then in week two, we covered these three sections. So those videos are located in this page. And then the homework assignment follows afterward. Um, this is the record keeping inside Canvas. So this is the assignment in Canvas that shows you how you did for the week, okay? But if you click on it, it describes to you exactly what needs to be done, when it needs to be done, okay? Um, let me go back to modules. Then underneath that, of course, is those assignments that need to be done for this uh, weekly homework average, okay? Then the next page is the week three lectures. Now, so far we've only covered P.2 and we're almost done with everything in that section. Um, I did post the video for that lecture. Since we're gonna finish it up on Wednesday. I did put Monday through Wednesday, this is what we covered. Um, and then on Wednesday, the rest of Wednesday's class will cover 1.5. Once we cover that, I will put that video in here as well, okay? Um, but P.2, even though we did it, um, we did part one. I can also add part two in here, which I will do shortly. Um, and then we'll have the 1.5 at the end. So, and if you click on the week two homework average, or I'm sorry, the week three homework average, it will explain that you need to do P2 and 1.5, okay? Um, eventually, the following week, we will get to week four, which will just be concentrating on the review and then eventually the test. OK, um, and when we do take that. Um, that test, I am going to update your homework. So all the homework final deadline will be February 7th and then we'll take our test on February 8th. OK, so I will put all of the scores in here after we've taken that test. Okay, but do know that you won't be able to work on any more home unit one homework after the seventh. Okay, the idea there is that there's no point in working on the homework and practicing the concepts after you've already taken the test and after the moment in which you're supposed to have practiced and performed. Okay, so homework has to be due before the test to ensure that you're ready for that test. Okay. Um, it really just doesn't make sense to work on homework afterward. I mean, what's the point, right? You already passed the moment <laughs> where you needed to know the information, okay? So it is, I know it looks funny because this one's due before that one, but um, but I'm not going to input those grades until after I've graded the test, okay? Um, module two, hopefully now that module one is done, um, We'll start, you'll be able to flow through the class a little bit better. So the overview has got the outcomes and the timeline. Timeline will tell you, you know, yes, we've got some stuff to do in week four aside from the unit one test and review. Um, you've got some stuff in week five to complete. And then we've got, of course, the test in week six. And I will add a note in here that we also have some items from unit three that we'll have to do in unit six, in a week six, okay? But that's simply how the course works, okay? So you should always be in the modules view. And I've mentioned it um, in class a couple times that you always wanna make sure that you're in the full web version. You don't wanna be using this, looking at Canvas on a um, cellular phone. Um, even some tablets will not open up the full site. They'll open up the, the um, mobile version. Um, and I'll give you an example. So like here, if I put this like this, this is now the mobile version. Notice how this has got one big bar up here. I don't have my navigation bar on the left-hand side anymore. This is the mobile view. Now you can um, go to your menu and then normally there's an option here that will let you um, view it as a website and not just um, now this is going to something else. So if you are in a mobile version, you should be able to click on your menu in your browser and then view the full um, version. It doesn't look like I'm able to do that um, on mine. 
but I know when I'm looking at it on my phone and I know I'm using the, <laughs> the mobile version, um, when I do click those three drop down arrows, it does give me the option to view the full, full version of the website. Okay, and that's what you want to be in the full version of the website. Um, okay, so hopefully that helps figure out how to navigate in Canvas. Now, another thing I wanted to discuss was how to navigate within the web assignment. Okay, so when you open an assignment, um, come on, to engage. So when you open this website, um, the, the link to the homework, homework pops up. And then it's asking you all these questions, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna enter a couple of them correctly, and then I'm gonna enter a couple of them incorrectly. So like this one I know is T minus 10 and T plus nine. So that one should mark it correct. Um, 30, 15 and two. So 2x minus 5. I don't know if this is, I'm just guessing, 2x plus 2. So I get 4, that's 9 and 10. That's not enough. Oh. OK, let me see. 4x squared. 3x, negative 20x, and negative 15. There we go. So those two should be marked correct. Now I'm going to go ahead and get this one wrong on purpose. OK. And I'm going to get this one wrong on purpose, too. Okay, so um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and submit this. So if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you can submit the assignment, okay? Once I have submitted it, it's, it's called an attempt. So I've used one attempt because I've submitted the whole thing once, okay? Now, if you scroll to the top, it will tell you your current grade. So it'll tell you which problems you got correct, which ones you got wrong. So it looks like I've only got one of them correct, but I, and I think I answered four of them. Um, so I only got one of them correct. Let's say you had all of them correct, but a couple. What you would do is you would go back and scroll all the way to the bottom, okay? And you see this button here, it says, um, you have no submissions remaining on this assignment. You can click new randomization. You must click that in order to generate another um, version, which gives you another attempt, okay? And when you do this other attempt, notice that there's no more checks or Xs on any of the problems. However, the computer does save them up at the top. I highly recommend, unless you're just doing all the problems all over again for practice, you only need to concentrate on the ones that were marked wrong, okay? So if you have any up here that are gray because you haven't done them at all, or if you have any um, of them up here that are red, those are the ones that I would suggest you go back down and, and fix, okay? So I don't need to fix number 13 because I already got number 13 correct. So notice, even though they gave me a new version of number 13, I don't need to redo that one, okay? So let me try to factor another one and hopefully I can get it correct. So that would be 12 minus four, nope. Let's see, what if we put two and so that would be six and negative eight. Yes, that seems to be, it looks like it's correct to me. So 
So I'm gonna go ahead and submit it, even though I only did one. Ideally, you would wanna do the whole thing, all the ones that were not correct before, those are the ones that you would want to correct. Um, I just correct the one just so that you could see what happens to the grades, okay? So I did get that one correct. And notice that on number 13, it has an X because it didn't respond to that one. But you see this little star next to it? It says, my answer is incorrect, but I already received credit for that problem for a previous attempt, okay? So if you go to the grade book, notice, or up at the top of the score, 15 still has the green check, even though I didn't answer it correct the second time. But 15 now has the check, and so that one's good as well, okay? I can keep going and redoing all the other ones that don't have green checks. I never have to redo the whole assignment all over again. However, you can keep clicking new randomization, new randomization to keep practicing more and more and more versions, okay? So you can definitely do it. Um, it just won't count against you if you happen to get number 13 wrong at some point in time, it won't take away your check, okay? Um, if for some reason you're not able to do another new randomization that like completely blocks you out, that's probably because you reached the 10 maximum, okay? Once you reach that 10 maximum, um, if you're not able to extend it anymore, you can click on request extension down here at the bottom, or you can click it up here at the top. And when you click on the form, um, I would just keep the deadline, whatever the deadline is. Um, so for instance, right now, this deadline is on the 7th. So I would keep it as a 7th. And then here I would just say need more attempts. Okay, and then you would submit this to me, it would give me a notification, and then it'd give me a little air, a little um, a drop down menu to actually give you more attempts. Okay, so you definitely can request more attempts. You can also, for some reason, if you need a deadline extension because you're facing uh, an emergency, you can definitely go here and ask for a deadline extension as well through there. If you ask me in person, I will let you know to come into WebAssign and request them through WebAssign, um, only because it generates that message to me that gives me the option to change the deadline for you. Um, and then we have these Ask Your Instructor buttons on every single problem, okay? You can use them, but I highly suggest that you only use them if you have a question, okay? So if you're like, miss, I don't know why I got it wrong. I typed in this, I typed in that, whatever. It's counting me wrong and I don't, I don't get it. Um, you can ask me a question and I'll be able to answer you. And what's cool about it is that depending on which question you click the ask your teacher button, um, it will give me a screenshot of that problem and let me see what you answered. It'll even let me see all the things you answered. Like if you tried numerous times, it'll show me what you responded each time. Okay, so I get all that detail if you click ask your instructor on a particular problem. Okay, um, I don't, you don't need to click this to be like, oh, miss, I think I got this one wrong because of this. It's not a communication button. It's more of like, you need something from me in order to complete that problem. Okay, um, if you're able to figure out what you did wrong and you're able to correct it on your own, you do not need to be clicking on ask your instructor. Okay. Um, but other than that, that is how you work on um, WebAssign. Now you can go to home and see all of the assignments. You can go to my assignments, see all the assignments. You could even go to your grades and see all the grades inside WebAssign. Um, communication is where you're going to go when you send me one of those request extensions um, or when you uh, send me the Ask Your Instructor. Every time I reply to one of those, you'll receive a communication in here, okay? And then there's a calendar, kind of gives you an idea of when the deadlines are, but we have a weekly calendar inside Canvas, so we don't really need this calendar as well. Um, but I hope that helped cleared up how to, one, navigate inside our um, course. Key thing is use modules and use full version of the website. And then two, hopefully that helps with navigating inside web assign okay um but that's all i have for now just wanted to do a quick video so you had 
an idea of how things work, okay?